Okay, hi there, welcome to uh, this video. So this part is in my series of sort of all about how my studio works. Uh, I think there's about three or four parts to it. One is just kind of like a quick studio tour going around the studio. Uh, there's one on all my MIDI connections. There's one on all the audio connections. There's one on how I incorporate the um, iPad. Uh, I think the one that the one that talks about the MIDI connections just sort of shows how I use everything without a computer. Uh, this one is all about how I would use my studio incorporating a computer running Ableton Live um, and specifically Push, which we've got down here. Um, because I do like push for sequencing. It's very, very useful because you've got all the, um, there's the repeat function on it. Uh, you've got the scales mode, which is really useful if you're not a piano player, which I'm not. Um, so basically I've got this uh, Ableton Live set, uh, set up um, as kind of like a template with all my hardware in here. Um, so I'm just going to go through the settings first of all, just in the options. So if you go to your preferences, um, basically all the only thing I've got set up is I've got the control services is picked up because I'm using the MX1 and the push. Uh, the only thing for this I've got highlighted on here for now is the um, USB 1 on the um, MX1, which is getting uh, track output from Ableton going into there. If you watch the MIDI video, you will know kind of a little bit about how my setup works. What I basically... Um, done is um, the kind of the uh, the TR80 sort of the start of my chain of um, all the MIDI connections and then everything passes through in a really complicated kind of MIDI through um, setting. So the reason I've got the MIDI here going to the USB 1 on the MX1 is because my TR8 is connected to USB 1 port on the MX1. If I send it anywhere else, the MIDI won't flow through all the rest of the equipment. So that's how I've got it set up. That will make more sense, I'd say, if you watch the uh, the video on the, the MIDI connections, because I have to kind of bypass the Electribe. Um, so then all I'm doing for, I've got loads of MIDI tracks set up here. So all I'm doing on each track is I'm taking the MIDI from uh, Ableton Push. So I'm going to press on Push on this one. This one's highlighted. You can see it's getting MIDI signal down here. And then basically each channel relates to the channel that I've got the hardware set to. So let's just quickly go through these because I'm using a few um, like racks and Max for Live devices as well just to help control the, the hardware. So basically my aim with this was to be able to control all my hardware and sequence all my hardware um, from push uh, so I can then record uh, those MIDI sequences into Ableton Live which is then going to be very very useful obviously for writing and arranging so this is more a writing and arranging kind of method I would use rather than a live performance so track one we've got the MB33 now unfortunately I've not got the audio cable plugged into that because I've had to nick that channel for my microphone. Um, so apologies for that. Um, okay, so I can select the tracks from the push. So if I press on uh, track two, which is this one here. Okay, that's the TB3. So now when I play, play on here, that is now sending MIDI to my TB3. I'm playing that. Channel three is the... That's the, uh, the TB03. So that one's set to channel three. Just go back to TB3. If I just open up there, I'm using this uh, rack thing here. Um, if you just do a search for TB3 by Protonica, I believe this is a free Max for Live device. This enables you to take remote control of the TB3 from Ableton Live. So if, you, if you're sequencing a load of stuff and you want to automate the dials on the TB3, and basically kind of use it like a VST with the sound coming from the hardware unit, um, very, very useful. And then it has an external instrument on this section. So that's why up here we've not got the, obviously because when you put an external instrument in, it kind of turns it into an audio track. Um, so I've got the, the same MIDI settings here as I would have had on here if that was a normal MIDI track. So MIDI going to the um, USB 1 and that's on channel 2. Um, so going along, we've got the Volca bass on channel 4. Again, I've got a similar... Oh, get rid of that. Um, I've got a similar the v bass control. I can't remember if I, I had to pay for this or I bought this. I can't remember, but there are a few out there. Again, this gives you the ability any of these dials can be automated and you can also control them uh, if i go on devices on push you might not be able to see this on the display at the top but um 
get on there. Obviously, we've got the controls on push as well. So if you want to record your automation from the dials on push, that will change these as well. So really, really useful um, for using these with push. Or you can just obviously program them in like you would on normal envelopes um, when you're recording just as a VST. So all of these these little plug-in things, like I say, it basically gives you sort of VST control over external hardware. Uh, the only thing on the Volker base is, which is hardwired on the Volker base, you can't do anything about that. Uh, the filter doesn't accept MIDI messages, so the only thing you can't change um, is the actual filter level, which is annoying because that's the best thing on the Volker base. Uh, but you can't do anything about it, that's just how the, the unit's built. Um, moving along, we've got the mini log. Um, let's just find a different patch for that. There you go, that's a bit nicer. Sorry, I keep knocking my flipping. There we go. Keep knocking that. Uh, right, so there we go. There's the uh, mini log playing from push. Again, we've got a similar device here. I think this one was free. Uh, the mini log 1.4, it's called. It's just like a uh, free max for life thing. Just going back on the Volker base, you also have the ability to save presets with this thing, which again is brilliant because obviously you can't save presets um, on the unit itself. So you can save presets within there. Um, moving along this channel I've not got plugged in, this is a Yamaha keyboard, if you look on the studio tour you'll know what I mean uh, about that. Um, the, this channel is the iPad which I've not got connected up at the moment but that would send MIDI messages out to the iPad so I can play any um, software synth apps I've got on the iPad. Um, I think normally I'll, I'll usually use that Sunriser app which is really cool. Um, the TR8, if you look at the, the layout now, it's actually changed now into a drum rack. So we can, this is using this um, drum rack thing here. Again, if you do, <coughs> excuse me, a search for this TR8 remote, I believe this is free as well, um, which basically gives you a drum rack with all the sounds from your TR8. Okay, with all the channels on there, which is pretty cool. Uh, moving along, we've got the TMX, which is the Yamaha drum sound module. Um, which won't play at the moment because I've just got to change the patch on the patch bay. Just give me one sec. Okay, so um, if you watch the video on my audio routine, you'll know what I've just done because um, I'm using a patch bay because I've run out of inputs. So that's the Yamaha TMX thing. So I've got access to all the sounds off that rack mounted device there. Uh, moving along, we've got on 15 the Volk keys. Um, I've not got that one connected up at the moment um, purely because I've had to use the. Um, change the settings on the MX-1 to do with the digital analog conversion thing for recording this video. So that's why I'm not getting any sound from that. But again, I've got this. I think I did have to pay a few quid for this one. Uh, Volker keys maxed, Volker key maxed. Again, you can save your presets down here. You've got access to all the controls, which again, you can automate, which is excellent stuff. Um, and then last on, on channel 16, we've got the system one. Let me just get a preset working on there. There we go. So that is then now playing the system one. So that gives me the ability, as I said at the beginning, to sequence all of my hardware, all from push and all within Ableton Live, which is obviously very, very useful from a songwriting point of view, um, particularly with all the automation as well, because if you're wanting to change filters and loads of, on, on loads of different synths at the same time, obviously with only one pair of hands, you can't do that. So it makes it very, very useful. And then really, it's just a case of recording the audio. So let's say I was, I'd was i got a sequence on here on the TB3. Well, let's, let's just kind of do that. Right, we'll do. Um, so I'm going to just record. I'm going to record all this from push. So we're going to do a just a two bar random thing. Um, uh, so... So I'll just... Uh, okay, yeah. Shocking, I know, but, you know, it's... <laughs> it'll do. Um, okay, so, um, now I've got that really bad um, thing recorded in there. Um, all I would do is put in a new audio track next to that one. I usually do it next to it so you know which one it is, and then obviously I'd rename that. But what I would then do is rename that probably... Um, TB3 audio, which I can't type. There we go, like that. Um, and then all I got to do is take the audio from because I've got in the you need to set all your options or your preferences up correctly. So if I just go to show you that because I'm using the MX1, oh no, wrong one, sorry. 
Got to make sure my inputs are all turned on. Um, the TB3 is going into, um, I believe it's USB 4 on the MX1, which I think is 1516 on here. So all I would then do is take the audio from 1516. If I now play that clip on the track, you'll see it's now getting a signal in there. I can then record that. Okay, and then we've got the audio in there. Obviously, the levels are a bit quiet, but we could boost it up there. Um, and then if you get a little bit of delay, as long as you know the timing, you can... I mean, all I would do with this is I would probably just set 1.1.1 there, just in case you've got any latency stuff, just to time it up and tighten up the timing and warp it. Um, that way around. I've got another video on that as well somewhere on my channel. Uh, but that's how I would then record the audio. So all the audio, well, I would record the audio for all of those those things. Um, and then uh, then you've got your track to arrange and so on. Um, so hopefully that makes sense and it gives you another um, way of, of using your hardware and controlling it from push. The only connections I've got into the computer are a USB connection from the MX1 uh, into push and a USB from the push. Sorry, start again. A USB connection from the MX1 into the laptop and a USB connection from the push into the laptop. Um, and then everything else is all just controlled via MIDI. Okay, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Please like and subscribe. I also now have a, um, a PayPal account if you want to give any donations, however small, are greatly appreciated. There's a link in uh, at the top of my page, and I'll put a link in the uh, description as well, um, just to donate if you feel generous. Or just go and buy some of my music or stream my music loads of times because any uh, any bits of uh, income that I can get from this just helps me to keep the channel going and uh, helps me buy more synths. Okay, thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one.